Hi guys, uh, since we don't have school today because of the water main break, I'm going to record a screencast that goes over the lesson that I would have taught you today if you were in school. I'll try to keep the lesson to 10 minutes or less, and I'm going to ask that you watch this and follow along and learn the steps in identifying the big idea in the feature article. Then when the video's over, I want you to practice doing these same steps on the feature article you've been working on at your table groups. Um, if you forget something I've taught you or you want to go back and rewatch a portion of this video just to refresh your memory or explain something again, it's always here for you to refer back to. So what you can see right now is the document we began working on last week for the feature article Outbreak. Um, as you can see, the top portion of this section is all the facts in the features that we identified. And then we left off identifying the facts in the text. And we got um, about to here, I believe. So I went ahead and I finished it for us. I added some of the facts from how doctors treat Ebola. And um, I added even a, f a fact up here from how Ebola is spread to humans. I added that authorities are taking drastic measures to contain the outbreak and they're using quarantines. So I added these pieces here for how doctors treat it. Um, I said that, and basically just so you know, so you can, you can copy my technique, you can use the same technique. What I did was I have one bullet point for every paragraph in that section. So if you go and look at the section of how doctors treat Ebola, uh, you can see that there's one, two, three paragraphs. So when you look here, I've got three bullet points. That's generally a good rule. You want you should be able to have like one major bullet point of like what was the point of that paragraph? What were we supposed to understand from it? So here we have three. Isolation is crucial to stop the spread of the disease. Anything that's been in contact with body fluids has to be decontaminated. And then we learn that scientists have not found a cure yet, but some drug, some drug companies have experimental drugs that, but are in limited supply. And that doctors don't know why yet, but some people do survive the experimental treatment after they contract the virus. And then for this last section, how worried should we be, there were four paragraphs. And the bullet points I had from that were that a direct quote said, people should not be fearful or worried about contracting the virus unless we are traveling to one of the countries with an outbreak. We know how to prevent transmission of the virus from one person to the other. The only risks are for those taking care of people with Ebola, and the best way to stay safe from an infectious disease is good hand washing, good sanitation, and being vaccinated against diseases that we have vaccines for. So now that I have finished identifying all the facts and the features and in the text, the next step is this one. When we talked about this last week, we need to look for places where it doubles up. We need to go find the facts that are in the text and the features, and we're going to highlight where they overlap. So I'm going to start up here at the top box, and the first thing I'm going to highlight is that we saw a lot of images of people in hazmat suits, and that is in the text, they don't talk about hazmat suits in the text, but what they do talk about is the spread of bodily fluids and that we need to be preventing the spread of bodily fluids and I know that that's what those hazmat suits are for. The next thing I wanna take a look at that I saw coming up a lot was this idea of we thought maybe we were in a poor or a warm climate and we know that from future reading that we are actually talking about Sierra Leone and we're talking about West Africa. And we do know that those are developing countries and they are warmer climates. So that's information that's come up a couple times. Another thing I wanna highlight is this question that appeared in the subtitle, how worried should we be? Because that is directly addressed in the text right here in this quote when the author or the article says we shouldn't be worried at all actually. So that's important. Um, let's also come up here and take a look at the fruit bats. Um, that came up in the text as well. We saw the, the feature, the picture of those fruit bats, um, but then also we learned in the text that scientists think that that might be where it all began and that animals who eat fruit with fruit bat saliva on it was how it all started to get spread. Next feature I want to look at is uh, the part here where we saw the, the guy with the sprayer on his back. Remember that guy? We noticed that. And then we also learned in the text that we need to decontaminate anything that's come in contact with bodily fluids. And after reading that part of the article, I realized that's probably what was in that sprayer, was something, some chemical that was going to decontaminate surfaces or other things that had touched bodily fluids. 
Next, I want to take a look here at people being quarantined in villages. We saw that picture on that last page of the quarantine, and then we learned in the actual text of the article itself that authorities are taking drastic measures to contain outbreaks, and quarantining whole villages is one of those things. Finally, um, I'm going to highlight this part here because it was both a feature and some text that showed us that even though Ebola seems really scary, it doesn't compare at all to the big three pandemics from history. So we've gone ahead and highlighted everything that overlaps. Now let's just take a look at it because the next step is the hard part. We need to look at all this information, look what we learned from the features as well as from the facts, and try to identify What's the big idea of this article? What is the message the author wants us to walk away with at the end? What are we supposed to understand and be informed about by the end? So let's just take a look at these highlighted areas. We see that something is contagious. We're in West Africa. We're really focusing on how worried we should be and we're told that we shouldn't be very worried. We figure it out, we think where it came from. We know some steps to take to prevent the spread, like decontamination and quarantine. And we know that Ebola wasn't even that big of a deal compared to the three big pandemics. We know how it spread. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna do some thinking out loud because this last box on the table it says, based on the facts and the features, what's the big idea that the author is trying to communicate with you? And then highlighted, because it's important, it says, remember, a big idea is not a collection of facts. It's an overall understanding that the author wants you to gain from this article. So when I look at everything we've highlighted and all the places we found this information, what I think the author wants us to realize is that there are a couple West African countries right now that are experiencing an outbreak of a very serious disease called Ebola. Um, so I'm just going to write that down. We also know from this that there are several factors that have contributed to its quick spread. But even though it's been spreading really quickly, it doesn't compare to the major pandemics throughout human history. Now, in addition to that understanding, I think really a, a, on top of that, like a really big thing the author wants us to get out of this article is that people in the US should not be worried at all about getting Ebola. And that's because we have such a low risk of getting it unless you're actually taking care of a patient with the disease. Because we know it has to go from fluid to fluid. It's not just by touching someone's skin. Um, in addition, we know, oops, sorry about that. Um, I think another thing that's really important that the author wants us to understand is that we know how to prevent its spread. They talked about hand washing, good sanitation, and isolating patients who have it. And for all those reasons, we shouldn't be worried. So there's my big idea from the whole article of Ebola. Now that you've seen that, take a moment and 
reflect on how we put it all together. How did we arrive at this big idea? Think of all those steps that went into it. We first read the features. We made a chart of all the facts we saw in the features. Then we made some inferences from the features. We activated our schema. We read the article. We looked for the facts in the article. We found the overlap. We, w we walked through all those overlapping things and took a big picture approach like, and asked ourselves, what's the point? What am I supposed to be getting out of this article? What was the author trying to inform me about in this particular piece? What's the big idea? And then you can see that I wrote, I wrote it not like a collection of facts, but I wrote it like I pulled back and, and wrote kind of like the, what's the big understanding from this article. Now I want you to go and try this um, and work on it for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes maximum on the article that you've been working at at your table group and see what you can come up with. See if you can get yourself to the big idea. Good luck. See you tomorrow.